Hello, boss. Miss me? Well, that's a fine how you do, isn't it? And after all the work I went through tracking you lot down, just up and left no forwarding address, thought you'd be glad to see me back. I only answered because I thought you might be the dentist at last. Oh, this is quite the upgrade, isn't it? How's in spring for this? I do. The old place is nothing but a smoldering pile of ash. Mmm, you still finally exploded, eh? It's only a matter of time. No, the fire marshal said it was arson. Spontaneous combustion. I say good riddance. Between the black mold, the lice, and that stench. Good old hospital stank. My assistant and I were happy to leave the office. It was mediocre. What are you doing here anyway? I was under the impression you terminated your contract here, Miss Sin. Oof, oh, poor name. Of course not, why'd you think that? I believe the exact turn of phrase was, screw you lot, I'm gonna be rich. Oh, it was so long ago, who can remember? It's been a month. And yet so much has changed. How did your miracle feel so, Abby? They didn't. I couldn't give them away. I tried telling people there was the cure for exploding face disease, but nobody would ever heard of it. True. Anyway, I figured I'd better do you lot a favour and come back here where I were needed most. Thank God. Nobody here understands me like you do, Abby. They're all sober. Mostly. Well, I won't keep you busy. Just point me in the direction of the nearest pit-like location and I'll be back to work. I'm afraid that's out of the question. Oh, is this place ain't got a pit? It is a root cellar, if that's what you mean, but I'm afraid it's already occupied. By what, veggies? Hello, Mum. You remember Miss Strychnine? The leech lady? Yes. She needed a place to stay and she wasn't picky about where. Now, I offered to share the surgery, but there was something about professionalism and abuse of power and burning jealousy. <sighs> The pit, I mean, the root cellar, was empty and she had no complaints. Of course not. It's nearly twice the size of my mum's home and it's got plenty of room for the leeches it does. You can't just give me pit. Where am I going to live? Oh, you can live in there with me. I'm happy to share. Grew up with seven sisters until the leeches got them. And I don't even snore or anything. No way. But I'm not evicting her. She pays rent. Pedigree leeches every Sunday. Abby Synth does not share rooms. Either she goes or I go. She has a way with words, doesn't she? I haven't even heard half the words she said up there. Well, let me introduce you to your other roommates here, these sweet little babies. Don't mind none if you forget their names, they're awful understanding. Oh, you named them? Of course I did. They're pedigree. Bartholomew here, he's the great-great-grandson of one of the leeches they used on Queen Victoria herself. Is that right? No, but people like to hear of it. Look, Miss Strychnine. Well, you can call me Merdina since we're going to be roommates. Look, leech lady, let's get one thing straight. This is my pit, you're just living in it. Keep your distance. I don't know if I can. You stay on your side, and I'll stay on my side. Does this mean you don't want to be bosom girlfriends? No. Do you want to play some cards? No. I could tell a joke. No. How about a song? No. What about the newspaper? No. That's all right, I can't read. Me neither. Oh, I hear it's class. What's there to read? If it's any good, someone will tell you about it anyway. Well, what if it's a secret? Especially then. True, that's how I found out about Ether's baby. What? Oh, wow. See what I mean? It's got a very light floral aroma. Is it? 
Notes of peaches I'm sniffing. Good nose! Edward never gets any of the salties. All that Aoife has destroyed his nose. Makes sense. Here, try this one. It's got undertones of coffee and cinnamon. Wow. Move your elbow. There's nowhere to move it to. We're in a pit. There'd be plenty of room if you wasn't here. Listen, you don't hear me talking about how cold your feet are. They're cold because you didn't wash me stockings. You don't wear stockings. Because you never wash them. You've had a needle in somebody, yeah? Yeah. And you've heard of threading before? Of course. But have you heard of scissoring? A bit overrated, this. Yeah, it's really more of a male fantasy. What's it gonna say? Don't know, I can't read. Can you do a leech? Can you see your shoulder? No. Then of course I can. Sometimes I think you care about the leeches more than me. Well, they need lots of attention. What about my needs? It's not a competition. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. It's alright, love. Walk under the bridge, isn't it? That's where the leeches are. Listen! And this little one's Penelope, I tells you. She's quite the princess. If that water isn't the exact right temperature, she throws a fit. Uh-huh. And this little one's Henrietta, and... Well, no offence to her, but she's a bit of a tart. Uh-huh. Leeches make good friends, you know. Most people don't know that. Uh-huh. They're humble creatures and good listeners, and they don't mind if you're stupid. I don't think you're stupid. It's all right. I am a little. Me mom always said I had more heart than sense, but leeches would never tell you that, because they ain't no geniuses either. Never did hear a leech say bad word about nobody. Besides, what's being smart get you? People expecting things from you. At least smart people don't have to worry about being taken advantage of. They're too busy taking advantage of other people. Well, nobody's gonna con you while I'm around. You stick with me, love, and the only crook taking advantage of you will be me. Today, Medina and me are going to the train station to throw tomatoes at coppers. You're leaving already? It's been 15 minutes. What happened to getting straight to work? Well, it is work, isn't it? Developing motor skills and whatnot. Gotta keep these legs strong for the leeches. Oh, I'll let them go, Vera. It's not going to get much more work done when she's here. Fine, but I'm not paying you for today. Atara? Don't wait up. Nice having Abby back. It wasn't the same with her gone. No, that is certainly true. And besides, it's nice to see that her and Mr. Green have become such good friends. From the mind that brought you the gentleman's discombobulator cane, in the automaton immobilization device comes another revelation in cutting-edge personal weaponry. Professor Ravenscroft's steampunk gadgetry proudly presents this year's must-have in self-defense, the Maelstrom. This cutting-edge gun is powered by the latest in textile technology. The stylish energy receptor on the base absorbs electrical energy from the thin air, which it uses to charge the Ravenite power cells, patent pending, attached to the top of the gun. These power cells can generate enough energy to bring down a rogue airship or stop a rampaging automaton in its tracks. Cut purses beware, one wrong move, and you could end up a scorching pile of ash. This gun was developed with power and design in mind, perfect for the man who has everything. Ladies, what debonair gentleman wouldn't be proud to have the Maelstrom proudly displayed in his drawing room? He'll be the envy of all his friends, and you'll sleep easier knowing the Maelstrom is on hand to defend your house and home. Just don't let the kitties near it. From Professor Ravenscroft's steampunk gadgetry, the Maelstrom. When you want to blow it away with style. <sighs> you can 
do this munch. Just a half hour at most. Sit, chat, have some tea. Do something good for the family legacy. Think about it. The Housen Family Hospital. Serving simple needs for a simple community. Hmm, that sounds reasonable, right? I think so. Welcome to the Sorbonne Society Hospital. Could this be due to the displaced guilt you feel over your own failures as a doctor? Yeah. Try the sugar. <laughs> Your entire face explodes. Have you ever tried getting brains out of wall? That you and I. Would you shut up already? After all, those people don't even have a donkey. Nurse? Nurse? Is that you, nurse? Have you brought up on trespassing charges, rightful or not? Why are you sneaking around? You came back in such a fright, my lord. Are you all right? Yes, yes, I am fine. I am all right. I just, I slipped. There's nothing for you to be concerned about. Amelia, please just go back to your servants' quarters. If you're sure. Yes, I am sure. Of course I am sure. I don't know what you think you saw that would say I'm not sure, but I am sure. Please. Ridiculous! Acting this way over empty threats, you should be ashamed of yourself! My father would never! Since getting worked up over something that's going to resolve itself in a few weeks anyway. Once word gets out about their qualifications, no one would dare go near that place. Better if they don't kill each other first. Right, yes, that. What, what can I do for you? What's this? Expenses. Ah, yes, of course, expenses. Right, yes, uh, expenses that I'll happily pay, mind you. I wouldn't think of doing any such nonsense as uh, going to the authorities or anything like that. That would certainly get me diagnosed with a bullet in the skull. Exploding face disease. Right, yes, of course. Exp I'll happily see to the paying of this uh, promptly by the end of the month. You see, uh, I am a little strapped for cash at the moment. Uh, financing a new hospital, you see, has put me in quite the bind after the last one mysteriously burned down for no particular reason. Spontaneous combustion. Right, yes, that. Um, as I said, I'll happily pay this promptly by the end of the month. Uh, no need to worry about that. 
Um, how about perhaps by the end of the week? <laughs> um, did you take a check? up to my will. Time to discuss funding. Well, I'm not sure this is the best hospital to receive. You will fund our hospital. As I said, I'm going to have to consider a variety of factors. No. Sorry? I love my work. That's nice. Nursing is a noble profession. I don't love nursing. Oh? Exploding face disease is contagious. Oh my god, you've been shooting patients? That's... you're unconscionable, reprehensible even! Does everyone else know about this? No, just you. Are you considering the factors? What do you want from me? You will fund our hospital. Why do you care about that? You just said you don't even like nursing! My colleagues are conveniently stupid. Ah, this is insane! What, what's to stop me from going right to the constable as soon as I leave here? If. Ah, wouldn't get you money then, would you? You're not our only appointment. So help me God, if that doesn't make you wish you were dead, I will do it backwards! Ready for my diagnosis? Fun your hospital. Thank you for your patronage. Thank you.
can't take much more of this. What happens when they bleed me dry and I can't pay? Fine ladies, business is booming again. This kid's up like to switch to fancier chalk from our pills. Gotta keep up appearances, what with the new building. I haven't had this many patients since Ergot hasn't gotten to the bakery. <laughs> I'm going to need an assistant for my assistant. Not like they had any other choice but to come to us. After our little public relations campaign, we was the only hospital in town people weren't afraid to come to. Alright, alright. For once you had a good idea. Don't get me Stop trying to take up smoking, you'll light your breath on fire. Oh, let him try. We can always buy him some new lungs. I doubt she count that as a business expense. She's not like being a bonnet about something. No offense, Alexandra. Yeah, what's the matter with her all of a sudden? Don't she understand what a gold mine we got? Exactly. That oozing is writing checks left and right. We should be blowing our noses in ten pound notes. Instead, it's nothing but Taffy isn't a business expense, Abby. Petticoats aren't a business expense, Alexandra. Prostitutes aren't a business expense, Edward! Perhaps Vera has had a moment of personal growth and realized it's unconscionable to take advantage of Dr. Housen's generosity at the expense of his own practice. <laughs> 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 Alexandra, you're funny. Personal growth. The only personal growth that woman's ever had is in the bus, and even then, not as much as you'd like. Edward! Now, you know Vera. As much cash as possible, right? We wasn't making her any money, just spending the oozings. She wants cash in hand. That shouldn't be a problem now. Ain't a doctor from here to Ottawa we ain't warned people about. Are you sure it was wise to spread rumours like that? What if- Ah, you can't be bothered with the what ifs. The boss said she didn't care how we got the patients, just as long as we got them, right? And whatever the illustrious Dr. Morphine wants. Maybe we should charge Alison for a new pair of boots. Why am I not spreading gossip? Now that would be a business expense. <laughs> you don't even wear boots. So? Ooh. <laughs> 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 oh. Do that if I were you. Beg your pardon. I said I wouldn't do that if I were you. No, I heard that. What do you mean, though? If you try and fight those butchers, you'll end up in worse shape than me. I went in with a nail through the foot, and they did this to me. Now everyone's calling me Legless James. That's what I mean. Someone needs to stop those... those... Ah, those malpracticing medics before they can do any more harm. And what are you going to do? Stroll in there, musket swinging along out high. Three words. Exploding face disease? No. Slow reload time. Ew. If we want them to pay for what they've done, we need a plan. 
I don't know. That sounds awfully evil. I mean, blackmailing and amputation is one thing, but making them pay? Do you want to get revenge on the Sawbone Society or not? Yes. Yes. They did all this. The, the Sawbone Society destroyed my life. My wealth, my prestige, power, it's gone! <laughs> you know, wh why should they get rich and successful off the backs of suffering innocents? <laughs> Why should the good people of Coldwater be forced to, to submit to the whims of drug addicts and murderers? Why should I be paying for it? No, it ends today! No more will the innocent patients perish at their bloody hands! I, Munchausen, will, will destroy them! Or die trying! Hey everyone, uh, my name is Matthew Avila. I am playing Dr. Munchausen, returning from season one and coming back for season two. So Dr. Munchausen is a real physician, uh, unlike some of the other uh, doctors on the show, and which explains why he's kind of a dick a lot of the time. He's characterized probably by his explosive character. He's very melodramatic, very dramatic, and uh, it plays a lot to the name Doc uh, Munchausen disease, which is actually a fictitious disorder in which the individual fakes a disease in order to garner sympathy, fame, attention. That's that's basically what it comes down to. And it really plays into his character considering how dramatic he is, very over the top. He's quite literally, he's a certified lunatic at this point. And it's really interesting to see coming from season one, where, you know, he was collected in his own way. Granted, he, he was a little tipsy-turny, but this season we're really starting to see him <laughs> into his very, I, I would like to say slow descent, but it's, it's gradually picking up speed with every episode that we film. And the more we get into it, the more he's kind of just splitting at the seams. And uh, it's it's been a lot of fun to, to play him, so it allows me to kind of explode on camera for, <laughs> for a couple minutes at a time. So with him being an actual physician, um, we can actually talk a little bit now about some real physicians of the time, of the 19th century. For example, we have Elizabeth Blackwell, who is one, uh, one of the first uh, female uh, medical practitioners to receive their degree in the United States. Uh, she was very important for her advocacy in having, in, uh, having more women in the medical field. She's the first woman to sit on the medical register of the General Medical Council of the United States and uh, continues to be a uh, well-loved and celebrated medical practitioner in um, of the 19th century. Furthermore, on the topic of doctors, if you've ever heard of Listerine, then you've probably ho heard of Joseph Lister. He was a leading pioneer in antiseptic surgeries and uh, is largely responsible for uh, a lot of the groundbreaking discoveries that followed with that uh, particular study. And he was also very famous for sterilizing his room with uh, carbolic acid in an attempt to remove bacteria from the operating tables. Probably stung a lot, but got the job done. And this is very novel for a time where surgeons were widely known for wearing blood caked uh, clothing to show how good at their job they were. So, good on you, Joseph. All right, we're gonna put Penelope on up here. She's gonna give you a little kiss and then uh, should be all useful again. Cool, she's on. All right, did you feel that energy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, she's doing her work. Excellent. Mm. I just needed something to relax me, you know? Oh. I've been so stressed lately. Mm. You've seen a lot you work with, so that makes sense. Thank you, finally someone that understands the stress I'm under. They're all... That's a good word. Or idiots. Well, I don't know about that. They all seem awful smart to me. I can see why you'd think that, but they really are just so stupid. Ah. Well, I'll put Bartholomew on here. Get some of that negativity gone. Something yes. about the humors, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, they like to eat humor. Mm. Yeah. There you go. You're already looking so much younger. Oh, thank goodness. How young do I look? I'd say about, uh, f fifteen, fifteen, fifth, yes. Um, I don't know how to count, I don't quite know. But you look amazing. Thank you. 
I'm just so worried about stress wrinkles. I was thinking of, I don't know, arsenic maybe. I'm getting too pink. Arsenic? Mm -hmm. That sounds quite nice, but if we're worried about pinkness, we just need more leeches on you. So true, they yeah. really are cure-all. Well, once these ones wake up, we'll put them on as well, mm -hmm. but for now, the team is on it. Mm -hmm. You're already looking paler, so that's oh, a good sign. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's all about avoiding the sun and laughing of any sort. I'm really quite a funny person. I just repress it. Oh, why would you want to repress things? We'll get the leeches on that too. I'm just not sure they are for wrinkles. Oh. But uh, everything goes with. Well, we, we, leeches eat anything. They eat wrinkles. Maybe they'll eat Mr. Ether. Oh, I, <laughs> I don't know about that. He's not quite up to their taste. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the only one who understands me. Oh, I also don't know about that, man. But I try. And it's much appreciated. I don't know why you like Abby so much. You're so nice. And she's a pit goblin. Well, she's such a nice pit goblin. And I'm also a pit goblin in a way, too. I share her down there. I suppose. I would evict her, though, if you asked me to. I don't know. She's good company. When we're in the pit, she's almost a little bit happy. Maybe. Or upset. Or nervous. I can't. It's, it's all coke addicted emotions. It's hard to tell. Exactly.